Hello YouTube. Welcome to Path of Walking Simulator version 6. This will be a quick overview and showcase. I will have a path of building file with my current build in the description and there will be a full build guide coming later, uh, hopefully in the next two or three days. So if there's anything that you don't understand or would like explained in greater detail, uh, please drop a comment. I'll make sure to get it added as best I can in that full build guide. Uh, but a quick overview, this is a Herald of Thunder build. Uh, we are scaling the damage of the actual lightning bolt from Herald of Thunder. Uh, it is very, very good for single target. Of all my other Path of Walking Simulator builds, this is the best single target one of them all, and you could reasonably boss with this build. Uh, Herald of Thunder by itself is not great at clearing, uh, but we are using Impulse's chest to uh, get some explosions, which turns this into a very smooth mapper as well. So you end up with a really great balance of single target and mapping. Um, so it works by just using the Storm Secret Rings. We can uh, use that to shock to trigger Herald of Thunder, then use the self damage to drive cast one damage taken loops to get more spells out there to shock more to keep the whole process running. Uh, so the, the damage is will self sustain. Um, it's actually very, very easy to play. I like all of my other walking sims. And let's get into the gear that you're going to need and kind of what you can expect to pay for it, uh, pending that I don't accidentally drive up the prices of any of these items too far with this video. First, we are going with the Annihilating Light Staff. This is a new uh, item added this league. The triple damage on the staff is awesome for Herald of Thunder. Uh, the 60% reduced resistances is not. And I do say 60 because you want to get one that has a 60% roll. Every 1% above 60 is another 5 or 6 all resistance that you need to offset that penalty. So it's well worth it to spend the money to get a 60% one. Uh, you're looking at about 50 chaos to get one of those. Uh, we have been also using the new amulet from this league, the Crystallized Omniscience, uh, which gives us a new stat called Omniscience, which gives us an absolute buttload of penetration and a lot of resistance to help us offset what we lose from the staff. Uh, it's about 20C for an uncorrupted one. Uh, you can get a corrupted one. The rolls really kind of are irrelevant on it. You definitely want to get one with 16 all uh, attributes just to help. Uh, but as I said before, we're also using a Storm Secret. We're using two Storm Secrets. Uh, not only for the self-damage, not only for the triggering of Herald of Thunder on shock instead of on kill, uh, but also because it greatly increases the frequency that Herald of Thunder hits, which is basically like cast speed for Herald of Thunder. Uh, you definitely want to splurge and get ones that are at least 40% increased frequency. It's about 10C each for those, so about 20 chaos for a pair. Also, as said before, we are using an Impulsa. Uh, I would say you can get a 5 or 6 link on the staff, but it's more important that you get the 60% roll on the staff. So I would recommend going for a 5 or 6 link on the Impulsa instead for your Hair of the Thunder links. You're looking at about 40 chaos for a 5 link, and I think it's like 2.5 or 3x for a 6 link. Uh, we have been also using a Black Sun Crest for our helm. Um, this is about the cheapest chaos you can spend on this build to get a lot of omniscience. Uh, each of the individual increased uh, attribute nodes uh, just gets turned into increased omniscience. And so if you can spend five chaos and get one of these with a total of like 30% on it, and that's one slot that's going to give you 30 to 40 all resistances and 30 to 40% elemental penetration. And so I highly recommend that. It's an easy thing to plug in. It's cheap. Get it. Then probably the best money you can spend on this build, pick up a Calamitous Visions Small Cluster Jewel. It's only like 10 chaos. Uh, it gives you the notable Lone Messenger, or the Keystone, Lone Messenger, that is 100% more Herald damage. So that straight up doubles the Herald of Thunder damage. So combined with just the Annihilating Light Staff and Calamitous Visions, you're already at six times normal Herald of Thunder damage. This will leave your gloves, your boots, your belt. Those are just going to be rares. Uh, you want to uh, prioritize getting life. 
then any resistances you need to fill in the gaps and make sure you get to a 75% cap, and then uh, more uh, strength, dex, and intelligence. You just really want to keep pushing those up to get as much Omni as you can. And it's not difficult to get upwards of about 1,500 Omni on this build, so you can get it up pretty high. The last thing is we have to give Herald of Thunder a base crit chance somehow. We are either going to do this with a medium cluster with a self-fulfilling prophecy, which is my recommendation, but if you can't afford that, because it's about, I think, 80 to 100 chaos to get a medium cluster that has self-fulfilling prophecy and empowering envoy on it, uh, then if you can't get that or don't afford that or don't have that, then you're definitely going to want to use an increased critical strike support gem in your Herald of Thunder links, just to make sure Herald of Thunder can crit to trigger elemental overload. Uh, tree, again, I have a path of building in the uh, description. Just check it out to see where my current tree is. I will have leveling trees on the full build guide, but not here. Uh, we are going with an Inquisitor. It does seem like Elementalist is a much more popular choice for this. I have not tried the Elementalist version. I can't understand why it would be a popular choice. What I like about Inquisitor um, is the crazy regen you can get from Consecrated Ground. Um, and also... Um, you, the three best ascendancy nodes you get are the majority of the damage. So you don't need Uber Lab. The fourth ascendancy is really not that much for the build. So you're coming right out the gate in maps with your full ascendancy power already. So again, pros of the build. It's pretty darn cheap to put together. You're looking at upwards of two plus million boss DPS for a, a couple X for all these builds. So it's like less than 300 chaos to put all this together. Um, it's incredibly easy to build because it's just a bunch of unique items. You can self make or just spend 10 C to buy the other rare stuff. And it's incredibly easy to play. Uh, the two cons is that because we are using Herald of Thunder and putting a bunch of supports on it, it is taking up a lot of our mana. So we're not able to use the defensive auras. Determination and Grace are really in a great spot right now. We're not able to use them. And it's weak versus multiple bosses. Because Herald of Thunder can only hit one target at a time, if you're fighting a map that has two or three bosses, the damage gets spread out between them, which is just going to make that fight take longer. Uh, you can kite individual bosses in that scenario, uh, but it does start to feel a little weird in that set of circumstance. Uh, but again, hope you guys enjoy this build as well as you have the last ones. Uh, stick around. The full build guide will be coming later, and I will see you all on the flip side.